I need Nas. I need Nas. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, let's get this nitrous finish uh, installed. Uh, for those of you who watched the last video, you'll learn a little bit more about nitrous in this video, but I need to caution you. I'm not teaching people how to do nitrous. I don't want you to watch this video and then think you know enough to go put nitrous on your aircraft or your car. There's so many things I've left out. I leave it very high level, very generic. There's things you have to pay attention to, like the end gap on your piston rings and um, your timing system. There's so many details that you need to know, and, I, and I'm trying to give you at least just the first blush of it. Uh, I mentioned in the end gap on your piston rings. Your piston has rings that clamp around it. You spring them out and they snap into a groove and they have an opening that allows them to open and close. There is a gap intentionally designed and when it snaps around the piston, there's a gap left on the end, the end gap of your piston rings. The reason I'm bringing this up is to, to help you understand why motors blow if you don't really understand what's happening. That gap is designed to be a certain size so when your engine hits the normal top temperature limits that that piston ring comes together and almost touches, but you can't have it touch. If it touches and it expands from heat, all metal expands with heat, that piston ring will grow as your temperature gets hotter, the gap will make contact, and then it will continue to grow, and that literally will take those piston rings and shove them into the side of the cylinder, so much so that it literally will gouge the wall and then blow the top off. I don't need to get a lot into that, but basically when you add nitrous, even though it is a forced cold air induction from the decompression of the nitrogen gas ex expanding creates the cool air, um, the explosion creates more heat, more horsepower is always more heat. That means that gap ring is gonna to come together and touch. And if you haven't taken into account that and you run more nitrous, too much nitrous, too much heat, you haven't built your engine to handle it, that gap is gonna make full contact and blow the top off. I hope that makes sense. Um, there's so much to nitrous. We'll dive more into timing later. I hope you like it. Let's get this nitrous installed and get it running. Back to work. This spider got you. That looks like something out of a horror movie. <laughs> Get it off me! Okay, this is what I gotta do next. I gotta clean. <laughs> this is a mess. Um, this has been in my race plane. This is the air box intake system I built. I've just started disassembling it. And uh, what I've gotta do is come through and drill a bunch of holes to do multi-port, multi-staged nitrous injection. I'll try and keep it an organized mess, but it's gonna be a mess of fuel and nitrous lines coming from here onto the nitrous plate. So here's the, the plate and I've got this, I've got the holes and mounting locations all done. Uh, we knew exactly how we needed to make this. So this will bolt on here, but every one of these lines here are gonna go with multiple hoses into the injection ports. There's a lot of work to do. I'm gonna stop talking, you know the drill. <laughs> Back to work. All right, guys. So the machine's running right now. Feel myself wet. Um, <laughs> we're uh, making a couple of these little fittings right here. These are my nitrous ports. <laughs> I wanted a, an exact depth into a custom size intake pipe, and I wanted to get the depth of the spray nozzle that's turned and shoots up the intake pipe into each cylinder at an exact location to get the best atomization and spray. So uh, I couldn't find these online, so we just quickly made them. All right, guys, there's a little bag of parts we just finished machining. So I'll show you how these go. Depending on which inlet tube it is, they have different locations to kind of maximize and make all the runs a very similar distance, but that snaps in. We 
good fit. So we'll put these in here, start snapping them all into here, and then we'll go through and start welding them up. Tight fit. Fuel, nitrous. This will go in this one. This has an outlet that points which direction the spray is, so I need to make sure that it ends tightening to spray up the tube into the cylinder. Multi-port, wet kit, multi-stage, nitrous on a bush plane, scrappy. <laughs> Let's get to work. All right, we got it done. It's not even dark yet, so we got a lot more we can do. This is all bolted down. It's all aluminum, but it actually picked up a little bit of weight, but <laughs> considering it's putting out a couple hundred horsepower, that's like an entire Lycoming 360 and then some in this much space and weight. Um, you can see all the ports are done, uh, coming in from both sides. All this is set up with manifolds, color coordinated. Blue is going to all my fuel, all the black uh, fittings are nitrous. And I now I just got a pipe and custom make over 40 lines. <laughs> uh, everything's gonna be atomized as they come inside these dual nozzles. One is fuel, one is nitrous. The fuel is coming in through this pressure reducer to take me down um, from my fuel injection pressure down to only 10 PSI. 10 PSI fuel coming out and right next to it is a blaster of the nitrous, which is coming out at 900 PSI. So the jet sizing is very different, but 900 PSI on this side, 10 on this side, paired inside a little atomizer sprayer hole, and it's gonna inject into every single one of these pipes perfectly clean. These two pipes you can see I didn't do it at this point. That's because underneath here, it got really short on how it works. And I wanted the distance to the intake very similar. So if you see, after I hook this on, I get pretty close. Um, I had to leave a little room for a hose and to be able to get the lines run. But I'm within a couple inches, but that's plenty close because I'm literally piping it and spraying it directionally into each cylinder head. So I'm really happy about that. But cylinder seven and eight, the rest are ready. Let's install it. All right, guys. So I bought a couple of different nitrous tank brackets and every one of them just weighed so dang much, I just couldn't do it. So I've quickly just balanced this up and leveled it, used a piece of uh, uh, cardboard tape roll of a one inch roll to put under there as a little stand, foiled it, made, laid up some carbon fiber or wetted some carbon fiber. We're gonna cut out some circles off this plate, split the circles, open them up and wrap around this and make a little stand to hold my nitrous tank upright. And then I'll make a separate stand that wraps halfway around the tank that bolts to the rear wall of my luggage compartment and a quick strap that goes around the front. The brackets I could buy online weighed about five to eight pounds a piece. And I think I'll be able to do all this for about six to eight ounces. So. Uh, maybe a little more with the bolts, of course, but it's going to be fracture of the weight, a little more work, but worth it. So, you know the drill. Let's get back to work. All right, guys. I already made a carbon fiber, carbon fiber part for the bottom. Now I'm making a top cap. Uh, the bottom will bolt to the floor in the back of the plane, pulled it upright. Now I want a part that goes around and straps it to the back wall so it can't move. But I want that part to be able to flex out and snap off and snap on, and then I'll put bolts in it that bolt it to the back firewall. So all I did is cut up a bunch of car cardboard, duct tape, put some foil tape on it. I'll kind of crease in all these wrinkles you see right here. I'll lay wet carbon over it. And when I'm done, I'll trim it off right here to about right there and leave a return on the bottom that can get the bolts in it. So the way the tank will go in, you'll just set it in a, look, a bowl looking, carbon fiber part bolted to the floor. Take the top, it will kind of snap around because I returned the carbon about five, six degrees around the backside of the radius. So it's kind of gonna kind of spring out and then snap around it and then bolt to the firewall. So I gotta lay up some carbon. Let's get back to work. Okay guys, this is all the nitrous and fuel lines for Scrappy. There's over 40 lines here and you can see i've got over on this table i'm lining up my nitrous jets my fuel jets and all the lines i've got out my 
feeler gauges right here because I always like to double check, take the fine wire, stick it through the jet just to make sure that it, what's jetted, what's labeled, and what the hole is is accurate before I stick it in because you have not much margin of error. We want to make sure that every one of these cylinders, if I'm adding 10 horsepower on each cylinder or some of these closer to 15 horsepower on each cylinder, I want to make sure that the jet is perfect. I didn't grab a 15 instead of a 13, so I check the number, cross-check it with my feelers, then run the lines. You can see I'm just starting to run these lines right here, and each one of these gets a nitrous and a fuel line. I got a lot to do, but I'm really pumped about it because this means a lot of horsepower. <laughs> Let's get to work. All right, guys, here is the top of my tank holder. I haven't got a clear coat or anything. I just got a quick rough sand on it. You can kind of see how thick I did this edge. That is over an eighth of an inch thick. So there's no way you're gonna get this thing to come apart, flex, crack, but it's, I left it a little bit flexible so you can get a little bit of movement out of the back, not so much out of the front. I'm really happy with it. We knocked it out really fast. I'm gonna have to tuck this around this gauge and there we go. There's my snap lock. So this is actually gonna mount vertical. The bottom is gonna go in its pocket. So once you drop this in its pocket, then here's the top cup. Then we bolt it here to the rear firewall. There's no way you're gonna get this carbon fiber tank out of its cradle, even in a crash scenario, which <laughs> maybe we never do that, but it's, uh, it's not going anywhere. All right, guys, I'm getting so close. So I'm down to fine tuning little details on the engine so that I've got everything on it so I can build my custom cowling to fit. I'm now down to little things like fresh air vents and heat. So this is a heat muff. This is made by Custom Welding Products. I think they're out of Las Vegas, but you can buy it at Aircraft Spruce. Um, and inside, instead of just the air going around the hot pipe, he made inserts with aluminum pipes going through and then wrapped them in a copper wire. It grabs much more of that heat off of that exhaust that's sitting in the 1,350 to 1,500 degree range, typically, uh, well, turbocharged, normally aspirated, 1,250, 1,350, 1,450 range. Um, but it grabs that heat, fresh air comes in this pipe, goes around all the inner coils, around the hot pipe that's through here, comes out here. So I've got to do a little bit of sanding, but that's going to trim up and clamp, and then I'll have a fresh air vent come to an intake. Um, off the front of the aircraft and this vent go all the way around to the back of the aircraft and go into the plane where I've got a variable drive to increase the mixing of hot and cold or um, how fast the air flows, all done on a turn dial, dial on my dash electronically with a linear actuator. I'm really pumped, little details, let's get them installed. That's a whole lot of talking. I'm just excited to be at this phase of the project because the next thing coming is going to be all my focus on the cowling. And then when that's done, all my attention on wings to fit the aircraft as built with the weight the way it is. So I'm super pumped to get on to that final phase. So let's get back at it. Back to work. Guys, I'm getting so close. I'm routing all my heat and air lines and uh, tying them up with uh, grip lock ties. These are rubber line zip ties, so nothing vibrates or slides around or wrecks your paint. Um, but I've got right down to here, and I've got an area that I've got two hoses that go to the front section of the cowling that's in the blast zone, and they're both inside the same NACA scoop. And the purpose there in the, why I've got two hoses going to one NACA is I want equal pressure on cold and hot. So one hose, hose is heat, going through heat muffs, the other hose is cold. They both go to a mixing valve on a linear actuator on a turn dial on my dash. That's a little electronic drive. I want equal pressure so that it has even controllability of mixing hot and cold to get the temperature exactly the way I want. But what I'm doing right now is I don't like having lots of big hose. Um, typically, you pull off a cowling and a big hose comes with it or you gotta reach down in and disconnect the hoses to the knack is kind of in a tight area. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna use a removable bottom little section of a cowling and be able to quickly disconnect two hoses. So I'm gonna quickly make a little carbon fiber part that attaches to a crossover tube so that all the other hoses can run everywhere they need to be run, grip lock tied into place, 
And then if I'm taking the cowling off, I'm just taking off a little teeny hose. That way, every time you pull a cowling on and off, these hoses tend to get a little wore out and kinked and cut. And I won't have to replace a big section that's tied in all over the place. I can just replace a little tiny piece if needed. Let's quickly go make a carbon fiber part so we can get back to work. Okay guys, so I could spend more time and put lots more clear coat on it. There really is no need, mostly because I wanted this done in under an hour and we're well under an hour from the time I started cutting. This part was a, a piece from a little track left over, um, little C channel that was for the parachute system. So that was scrapped, couple old pipes from being made before, paired it together. Now it's ready to go in right there. So we can get back into final assembly. All right, guys, nitrous tank is in. We got a little bit more to do up front, but let me show you how this all turned out. Yeah, Scrappy's helping today. What do you think? Is that good, Scrappy? <laughs> anyway, I couldn't be happier. It's tucked in nice and tight. It's easy to remove. Most of the time, matter of fact, I almost never use this system. Yeah, right. But it will be fun to have if I ever just want that extra couple hundred horsepower burst. But if I ever just don't want the weight, a couple of screws, the whole system comes out. Can't wait to try it. Put it on a pull test, see what it'll do. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, we're going to do something really cool. I've already tested all the fuel lines to the nitrous, and there's a bunch of them. <laughs> there's Ron. <laughs> Three stage nitrous kit. We have five different options of how much horsepower I can change or switch, give all the power I want. Right now we're gonna blast a little bit of nitrous right now. Go ahead, Ron, hit the purge button. Hold it for two seconds. So that just blasts nitrous out the side. The line runs from the nitrous tank all the way to the engine to a valve and returns back into the aircraft and shoots out the side. It makes sure that there is no air left in the line from switching a tank. So it's all nitrous right to the divider of all the solenoids that activate the nitrous. So um, purge system works. Now we're going to do hit the 50 horsepower option. There we go. That is ice cold. All right, uh, let's go to 150. Do the 50 and a 100. Go. Okay. Give me um, the 50 off. Give me two 100s, so 200 horse. <laughs> so cool. All right, give me uh, all of it. Two, <clears throat> give me 250 horsepower for about five seconds. <laughs> That is really cold. Um, anyway, so that is running all individual jets into each intake pipe. So it's a multi-port tri-stage system. Uh, I can't wait. I got to put some exhaust on, put a little bit of uh, heat reflective tape over top of all my braided lines just because of the proximity to the pipes. I'll also put up a heat shield um, aluminum divider. Uh, a little overkill, but I like it that way. So we're gonna, let's hit it one more time, Ron, just cause it's fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm so pumped. I'm so close. The nitrous is done on one entire side of the system. That's fuel, nitrous tanks, it's plumbed, it's ready to go, but I can't hit the button yet. There's a second phase that's as critical as everything I've already talked about, and that is the timing. Aircraft motors, since they're not controlled like new automotive cars, on an automotive car, I could buy a computer system and tell the car to retard the timing when the nitrous goes off. There isn't a system like that for scrappy. It's a very basic system. It runs off of voltage. So what I need to do is cause my, my timing to retard relative to the nitrous switch I have selected. So it's a much more complex nitrous because I have different options, which means I have to have different timing. That system doesn't exist for an aircraft, so I gotta make one. I'm gonna create a simple system that when any switch is activated, it change, changes the voltage 
going to my electronic ignition, and since the voltage is what dictates the timing, for example, 22, 24 degrees before top dead center, I need to alter the voltage at the second the nitrous button is hit so that it changes the timing from 24 to 18 or 15, whatever I need for that nitrous shot. Hope that makes sense. But the reason why you need to change the ignition timing is very simple. Nitrous burns extremely fast. If this is a normal explosion in slow motion, this is nitrous. That piston is coming up and before it gets over the top, switches sides on the crank, on its way up, your explosion actually starts before the piston crests the top. And that's because the explosion is slow relative to 3000 RPM and the explosion gets powerful as it crests the top and pushes the piston down. The way you destroy an engine with nitrous and the way most people wreck it is too big a nitrous or they don't time it right. They think their timing can stay the same. The piston comes up and their nitrous explosion does this instead of a slow burn and the piston coming up gets 100% of that explosion the wrong way. Parts fly, heads blow off, it's a bad day, you gotta rebuild your motor. We don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna make a very simple voltage step down to correct my timing at any given nitrous setting. I think I'm gonna get online, I know all the parts I need, order everything up, and I'm gonna jump on the cowling, some button up, some other loose ends, and then I'll dive into the ignition alteration for my nitrous. We'll do that later. The next time, or the first time I get to see nitrous running on Scrappy will be probably with a cowling on it. So I can't wait to do some, some thrust test. I can't even talk, I'm excited, and I'm tired. I'm done for the night. I'm gonna get some sleep. Then we're gonna get back to work.